let's get started. Um, I'm going to suggest we're I'm doing half kneeling today. Um, but you can do the half kneeling work in a chair. So I suggest having a chair handy. If being on your knees is makes your knees really sensitive, do all the movements. You can do them all in the chair with the knee off the floor. Um, so outside half kneeling, we're also going to do some core work on the knees, doing some tall kneel lean back. Again, if that's an area where the knees are overly sensitive, then just skip that part of the session. Uh, we'll only spend a little bit of time there. Um, rest of the class, shoulder mobility, hip mobility, and we're going to get some core activation going. So let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> We're going to start on our back. Uh, you can use either a chair or you can put your feet up on a wall. Uh, if you're putting your feet up on the wall, I would suggest scooting your bottom fairly close to the wall so that your knees are above your hips uh, and your feet are able to just rest lightly on the wall. We're going to go ahead and let heels and the ball of the feet touch each other. And the knees are going to splay open about shoulder width apart. So we're making a little bit of a frog shape with our knee, with our legs. We're going to start with our crocodile breath. So we're going to make a big C shapes with our hands. Thumbs are going in the uh, low back area, kind of palpating into the, lump, the muscles along the spine. Index fingers are wrapping around and lightly pressing into the abdominals of the belly and the sides of your palms are lightly pressing inwardly into the side body. And I want to uh, clench the hands in lightly in order to create resistance so that when we inhale, we're inhaling and we are inflating out in a way and pushing into all of the, uh, the entirety of the hand. I want to feel the low back pressing into the thumbs, the belly pressing into the uh, index fingers, and the side body pressing out into the palms. We're going to inhale and expand like a balloon. On the exhale, feel the navel draw all the way into the spine and allow the hands to cinch down just a little bit more in order to create resistance for your balloon to expand into. We'll get a good five to six deep breaths. With each inhale, see if you can expand the balloon a little bit wider. With each exhale, draw that navel all the way in. Get as much of that breath out of your body as you can on the exhale and then fill up as big and wide as you can on the inhale. We can now let our hands relax, but we're going to continue with the exact same breath, expanding out like a balloon. We're going to bring our hands and we're going to push our, and extend our elbows, pushing away into the knees. And then at the same time, pull the knees in tightly to your hands. I want to get that nice, push and pull effect so that you create some pressure within your abdominal cavity. So this needs to be a nice active push, active pull. I want to have shoulders and head relaxed on the floor. So if you feel your head and shoulders lifting up, allow them to drop down. If they don't touch the floor naturally, then it's okay to grab a towel or a blanket or something and set it under your head and shoulders so that you have something to rest upon. You can have a little bolster underneath. So we got this nice push, pull, active core. We're doing the exact same breath, expanding out, blowing up our balloon on the inhale, and the exhale, drawing the navel into the spine. And then as you inhale, seeing if you can expand that balloon a little bit wider. And on the next exhale, as you draw your navel in, I also want you to just start doing a light kegel, like you are whole, going, you know, squeezing off to hold your pee or hold your poo as you're going to the bathroom. I want to lightly squeeze on the exhale 
And then on the inhale, as you expand out and away through the, the belt balloon, I also want that breath to press down into the pelvic floor. Feel it release the Kegel. I want to go from clenching in a Kegel to feeling that breath expand out and away through the pelvic floor. As you exhale, drawing navel to spine, we're going to do that nice squeeze, uh, squeezing our Kegel. And then on the inhale, we're breathing right into that Kegel to feel it expand and lengthen out and away. We'll get good five to six full breaths. Again, feel that balloon through the abdominal walls as well as that breath moving down into the pelvic floor, getting the pelvic floor to lengthen on the inhale. On the exhale, we're drawing navel in and we're kegeling, squeezing, pressing all that air out. Once you get five to six breaths, we're gonna slowly come up to a seated position. We can move our chair out of the way uh, and I wanna grab a staff. I want to get up very, very slowly. We just did a good amount of breath work and I want to make sure that we're not lightheaded or dizzy. So take your time getting up. If you do feel dizzy, then I'm going to suggest doing this next part in the chair and sitting down instead of standing up. We're going to grab our staff. We're going to get about a shoulder width grip. This is where I want to imagine we're trying to bend the staff in two. And I want that bending to happen at the wrist, at the elbow, and at the shoulder blade. So we're trying to bend the staff. I want to spiral those elbow pits up towards the ceiling and feel the shoulder blades uh, cranking down on the rib cage like we're trying to break the staff in two. Keeping the staff low to start with, we're going to breathe into our crocodile breath, into our belly. On the exhale, drawing the navel into the spine, and we're gonna get a little bit of pelvic tilt work to start with. So on our inhale, let that breath fill up the belly. Let the pelvis tilt forward so that we get a little sway in our back. On the exhale, we're drawing our navel in and we're scooping the pelvis. I wanna feel the, your butt cheeks clench a little bit as you tuck your tailbone and feel your core lightly get engaged. Inhale, nice sway in the back. Exhale, scoop. See if you can feel an active core, an active abdominal core as you exhale and scoop. On the next inhale, as you go into a sway back, our exhale, scoop, we're gonna start bringing our elbows up towards our ears. I want to actively scoop at the pelvis at the same time that I'm drawing my elbows back to the ears with an exhale. Inhale, nice sway in the back, let the belly open up, arms move forward. Exhale, scoop, feel that core engagement as you pull the elbows back. With each one, See if you can squeeze the elbows a little bit further without forcing it. I want to make sure that we are maintaining that core. I don't want to have sway in the back as I'm drawing my elbows back. I don't want to get in this hyper extended position where my rib is flaring out. So that scooped pelvis is going to draw the rib down at the same time that you're pulling the elbows back. We'll do 10 up to 20 reps, making sure that this is not painful on the shoulders. We're going to then move the staff to behind the body, palms facing backwards. We're still bending the staff away from the body, so the elbow pits are still spiraling forward and still feeling the shoulder blades packing down and back. We're going to inhale into that belly and we can still allow that belly to kind of open up. Exhale, drawing elbows up to the ceiling as you lightly scoop. 
Inhale, fill that belly up, little sway in the back. Exhale, navel to spine as you scoop and lift the elbows at the same time. Again, with each one, we're seeing if we can go a little bit higher without forcing it, just squeezing into that end range. And again, 10 up to 20 reps, as long as it is not painful and we're not forcing it. We're then gonna flip our palms to the opposite side of the staff. We're still bending the staff away from the body and we're doing all the same mechanics. Inhale, open belly, sway in the back. Exhale, scoop as we lift. As you're lifting the elbows higher on each one, also see if you can feel your chest kind of naturally opening and expanding out forward. I don't want the shoulders to just roll forward as we lift. See if you can feel the shoulder blades continue to pack back. We're still trying to bend that staff. Can you feel your chest open up towards the, uh, the, wall, the ceiling in front of you? We're then going to set the staff down to the side. We're going to keep it close because I want to use the staff uh, for part of our half kneeling work. Again, this part, if you need to use the chair for half kneeling because the knees are sensitive, you can do all the same work in the chair. I'm coming down to one knee. I want to have the back toe tucked underneath. That big toe is tucked underneath as if we are going to spring off the floor. And very quickly, I'm going to just get on the chair to kind of show the same position. So on the chair, I want to be in the same position, just the knee is off the floor. Back toe is still tucked in the exact same way. So we're going to do the exact same work in the chair that we're going to do on the floor. So I want the knee directly under the hip, directly under the shoulder, directly under the head. We're coming right back into our breath, filling up that balloon and allowing the pelvis to tilt forward. On the exhale, we're drawing navel up and in as we scoop the pelvis and see if you can feel that stretch or that tension down through the front of the hip. Inhale, we're allowing it to open back up. Big sway in the back. Exhale, see if you can scoop a little bit more into it load into that tension at the front of the hip. The more you got that big toe loaded underneath, tucked underneath, as much tuck as you can get, you should feel stretch or load or tension load at the big toe, as well as an increase in that tension in the front of the hip. We'll do up to 10 reps on this today. Going nice and slow. Feel out that, that tension. Does it get a little bit more mobile after you get through three or five reps? Can you start to feel that length and that tension moving down the thigh towards the knee? Then we're going to turn and switch to the other side and we're going to do the exact same thing. Again, head over shoulders, over hips, over knee. Big toe is tucked. We're inhaling, filling up the belly, letting our back sway as the pelvis tilts forward. Exhale, drawing the navel in as we scoop at the pelvis to see if we can feel that tension at the front of the hip. How does it feel on this side compared to the other side? My left big toe feels a little bit tighter on this side, and I'm finding it a little harder to get in to feel this tension in the front of the hip. 
My left hip tends to be the tighter hip of the two, especially through the medial and uh, adductor compartments of the hip. Um, so, you know, this is, this is a part of what's normal for me. I want to really kind of gather this information of how is it different on the left side compared to the right side. Ooh, that time I got into it. So again, after three to five reps, does it change? Does the tension change? Are you able to get into it a little bit more? Did you get an increase in range of motion? Can you feel that tension getting drawn down a little further down the thigh? Do you feel it more in the big toe joint? After 10, we're going to flip back to the other side. We're going to do the exact same thing, except now we're going to add in uh, our arm reach. So I'm going to change my to face forward. So nice inhale, allow that belly to fill up, pelvis turns towards the floor, exhale, navel to spine and scoop. And then whichever leg is down, that hand is going to reach up and extend up to the ceiling as high as you can. On the inhale, we're letting it drop, filling up our belly, sway in the back. Exhale, scoop as you draw in and apply reach. I want this reach, each reach, we're seeing if we can go a little higher. And I want that reach to draw all the way up from the front of the hip. Can you, can you feel that front of the hip tension Get drawn up into the abdominal viscera all through here as you reach and extend up through the fingers. Inhale, let it soften. Exhale, reach and extend. Again, I want to feel it all the way down from that thigh up. And we'll switch to the other side and do the same thing again. I want to have that sense of comparison. One of the biggest things to compare are going to be the big toes. How does the left big toe feel compared to the right big toe in this position? And how does that impact the stretch on the front of the hip or tension in the front of the hip on the left side compared to the right side? Those are really, really important assessment points that I want to have develop a deep awareness of on a day to day basis. So, Inhale into that belly, nice sway in the back. Exhale, navel to spine as we scoop, and then whoo, nice reach in extension. Inhale, let it all soften. Exhale, whoo, scoop and reach. With each one, see if you can scoop a little bit more. And can you draw that reach up a little higher? Or as you reach higher, can you feel that stretch draw a little lower down the quad, down the thigh? We're going to go ahead and grab our staff again, and then we're going to switch sides. So again, you, this can all be done in the chair. So um, I'm bringing the staff. We're going to let it sit on the front of the front tips of both shoulders. I want it touching the tips of both shoulders. This will help keep our chest square. And we're going to add rotation to this. So everything, the first part is the same. Inhale, fill up the belly, pelvis tilts forward. Exhale, drawing the navel into the spine as we scoop. And then we are rotating and turning our chest towards the leg that is knee that is elevated. So getting that nice inhale, exhale, and then seeing how far can you rotate, keeping the staff touching on both shoulders. How far can you turn the staff? Inhale, you're bringing it all the way back forward, sway in the back. Exhale, scoop and rotate. Now, as I rotate, I want to be locked in to my feet and my hips. I don't want my knee to rotate with. 
My knee should not turn out as my chest turns. If anything, I kind of want to keep my hips locked in, counter rotated. They're, they are locked into the opposite direction so that I am only rotating from above the hips. My below the hips are not moving with my shoulders. And then we're going to switch and do the same thing on the other side. This is a pretty interesting core activation exercise. So you may find that getting into this, that you may feel some, some activation of your obliques that feels different on one side to the other. It might feel really intense, like I didn't know that muscle actually worked, uh, or it could feel uh, tight or restricted. So I want to kind of, kind of keep an awareness of what you're feeling through this core area on both sides. So again, make sure that back big toe is tucked underneath. Nice inhale, filling up the belly. Exhale, draw the navel in and scoop. And then turn the staff as far towards the wall at your side. Inhale, bringing it all forward. Again, I want the knee, the legs to be actively counter, countering the rotation of the upper body. So don't let the knees move with your turn. Keep them held counter rotated. They should be keeping you moving, the lower body moving in the opposite direction. That will get a little bit more core activation in that core. Good. After 10, we'll go ahead and set the staff off to the side. I'm going to very quickly turn on my air. And we're going to come back down, we'll come down to the floor and we're going to get into shin box position. I'm going to start on my right side shin box today. So right knees forward, right hand is out to the side, grounding that palm. I want to spiral that elbow out and away, and we're focusing on that back hip first. Inhale, allow that hip to drop towards the floor. Exhale, we're seeing how far forward can you move your hip bone and scoop it at the same time, like you're trying to turn that tailbone in order to touch something straight out in front of you. Inhale, we're letting it all the way back to the floor. Exhale, we're scooping straight forward. Notice I am pointing straight forward. My chest does not need to turn because I am not going to the side. My chest and shoulders should be square with my hips. Left outside back hip drops and then scoops to move forward. I don't want to get a lot of movement into my shoulders and chest right now. With each one, See if you can inhale and fill up a little bit more as you drop the hip. Exhale, full exhale. Draw that navel in and scoop into it. How much can you feel that tension through the front of this hip? Can you start to feel some tension, some tightening, some contraction in the glute in the back? Those are two things I want to feel. I want to move into the tension on the front of the hip. And I want to feel that active, that active contraction of the glute. And the more you scoop into it, the more you should feel that contraction. So each one, see if you can move a little bit deeper into that tension of the front and contraction in the rear. And then we're going to switch sides and we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So grounded palm, elbow is spiraled out and away, chest, sternum is lifted up, shoulder blade is moving down the back. Inhale, filling up that crocodile breath, our balloon breath as that back hip drops to the floor. Exhale, the hip bone is moving straight forward as we're scooping the tailbone into it to see if we can feel that light tension on the front of the down the front of the hip and thigh inhale we're letting that hip all the way back down 
fill up that belt, that uh, crocodile breath, exhale. Can you scoop a little further? Again, I want to make sure that the shoulders are not turning and or leaning forward. I am keeping my chest in one position. The only thing that is moving is this back hip scooping forward and then dropping all the way back. With each one, we're seeing if we can move more into the tension in the front of the hip and can we start to feel contraction in that glute. How does it feel on this side compared to the other side? Does one side, do you have a greater, more tension, bigger stretch in the front of the hip? On one side, do you feel more contraction in your glute? Or do you find it difficult to feel those on both sides? If that's the case, that's worth talking to me about in a consultation. We're now gonna switch back to the other side. And now we're gonna start getting into our folds. So with folds, I'm gonna use the, I'm still keeping everything facing forward. Uh, my chest is facing my shin that's in the front. I wanna reach both hands evenly through that shin as we drop our shoulders reaching forward on our exhale. Inhale, we're bringing it all the way back up. Exhale, we're seeing how far we can fold. Keeping both hands perfectly even. I don't want one hand to reach further out in front than the other hand. That might be an indication of something going on in our low back. So I wanna keep both hands even and see how far are you able to reach both hands and do you feel a stretch in your low back or is it largely in the, that glute of the front hip? Each one, we're seeing if we can reach a little further without stress, without going into pain. Again, each inhale, we're filling up our balloon. Exhale, drawing navel into spine. As we exhale and reach a little further. After 10, we're gonna switch and do the same thing to on the other side. Exact same position, shins forward, hands reaching through. Inhale, fill up the crocodile. Exhale, reach both fingers evenly as far as you comfortably can. Inhale, coming all the way back up. How does it feel on this side? compared to the other side. Do you feel this more tension or tightness in the glute on this hip? Do you feel it more in the front of the back hip? Or do you feel it more in your low back? Do you find that it's harder to reach? You just can't reach quite as far. Kind of taking notice of what are the differences between the left side and the right side is really, really important. Once we get 10 on that side, now I wanna start working side to side. So we can either go through our windshield wipers, working across, reaching into our fold, inhale all the way back up. We'll take an extra breath cycle as we windshield wiper across to the other side and do the same thing. By going back and forth, uh, our ability to compare what the similarities and the dissimilarities from side to side become a little bit easier. So really notice, how does it feel? How far can you reach when you go to the right side compared to when you go to the left side? Which side feels easier? Which side feels more challenging? See if you can notice what it is about the two that feels different.
All right, so now, last little bit I want to do in our shin box is I want to work shin box to knees. If you have sensitive knees, this might not be a good movement for you to do. We're going to start easy using our hands to kind of help us get up. So if the knees hurt at this point, then I would suggest coming back and just working some more either the shin, the pigeon or the anterior hip, or you can add in your reach and rotation or some of our other shin box movements. Uh, I don't want to go through this if it hurts the knees. From uh, knees, I got, I'm got. i going to put one hand behind and one hand in front, and I'm going to use my hands to guide me up to my knees so I come up into this tall position. We can get a little active scoop of the pelvis as we draw our navel in to feel a little stretch through the front of the hips. And then we're going to use our hands to guide back down to make sure that this was not painful or uncomfortable on the knees. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. I've had five knee surgeries on my right knee and one on my left. Most of the time I can do this movement, but every once in a while I can't, which is why I always use my hands the first time to make sure, because I wanna make sure I'm grooving a movement that my joints can actually support. So again, hands, support, to help bring up to knees, get a little scoop at the top. Again, I'm making sure that this is not painful. There's no clunkiness, there's no discomfort. Using the hands to come back down and ease back to the floor, going back to the other side. So now you can continue to use your hands on this. If the knees, if the hips feel kind of weak and it's difficult to get off the floor, use the hands as much as you need. That's not like the, we're building neurology and the hands are an okay way to support. If you can do it without hands, we're going to drive through both knees evenly. Exhale, drawing navel up into the spine as you scoop the tailbone at the very top so that we feel that stretch. And then on the way down, we're going to reach our hips as far back as we can. I'm not just dropping straight to the floor, I am reaching back. I'm seeing how far can I get my hips to go back before they naturally kiss the floor. The further back you're able to reach, the more you're gonna start to feel a little stretch in that glute of that hip. And we're gonna work one, we're gonna go back and forth on this. So once we go one, we're gonna go all the way across to the other side, and we're doing the exact same thing. Nice reach back. See where you can kiss your bottom to the floor. I want to avoid plop. I don't want to drop. If you're finding that, that you can't control that last inch, use your hands. Guide it down. Go slow. We need to build the neurology through that range of motion. Again, each one, we're alternating one side to the other. If you're able to do this fully without hands, as you're reaching your butt back, you can counter reach through your fingertips to create more length into that glute to add a little bit more stretch, um, eccentric load really, into that glute space. I wanna feel that reach and counter reach through the fingers. The counter reach will allow you to get a little bit more extension through that tailbone backwards and it should feel good. If this feels uncomfortable, then I want you to back off and go to one of the other movements. I don't wanna force this. We'll do 10 on each side. All right, so now we're gonna come into our quadruped, hands and knees, spreading fingers out nice and wide, grounding palms, extending the elbows fully without locking. We're gonna get into our wrist mobility. So um, we'll just do five reps on this one uh, for each of these. So inhale, letting our weight come back. Exhale, 
we're rocking forward and loading into the wrist space. Noticing the difference between the left wrist and the right wrist. We're inhaling into our balloon breath as we rock back. We are exhaling, drawing navel into spine as we load. How does that right wrist feel compared to the left wrist? Is one side stiffer, achier, less range of motion? Is it painful? If it's painful, then I want you to back off. I don't want you to move into pain. Next, we're turning fingers out to the side and we're getting our side to side glide. Exhale as you reach to the side. Inhale as you come to center. Exhale as you go to the other side. And again, compare how does this feel right side compared to left side? Is one side stiffer? Is it achier? Is it less mobile? Is it uncomfortable? Is it painful? Next, we're turning fingers all the way back towards the knees. The closer the hands are, the less intense this is. Inhale now goes forward, or exhale rocks backwards, hips to heels. But I want to keep the palms pressed into the floor as we rock back. So don't let the palms lift up. So only rock back as much as you comfortably can. We're feeling this load into the forearm space. While at the same time is trying to keep our fingers spread and long. So I don't want the fingers to kind of like crinkle up and get short. See how long you can keep those fingers reaching out and away as you're sinking back hips to heels, keeping the palms down. Again, I don't want to force it. This should feel good and juicy, not uncomfortable. Next, we're flipping the palms upside down so that we're on the back of the palms and we're allowing the elbows to bend lightly. I want to focus on the elbows first. We're going to lightly press into the floor in order to extend the elbows. I'm really trying to reach and extend through the elbows to see if there's any stretch related to the elbow space. If there is, then that is exactly where we want to work. Playing in that juicy nature of the stretch. Working into it where it's like, oh, that feels good, and then letting it soften. Working into it to where it feels good and letting it soften. And doing, we can rep this one out five, ten reps. Um, and see if we can get a little bit more range of motion within the elbow space. But I want to focus largely on the elbows on this. If you're able to extend your elbows completely without locking, then we can do a little bit of rocking back hips to heels. Exhaling as you let the hips rock. Inhale as you come forward. But if you've got any level of stretch in the elbows, you've got, don't worry about rocking back. I want you to just stay with that extension aspect. We'll go ahead and take a little, re uh, take a little pressure off the wrist. Um, for a moment, we're going to come back into our quadruped. And now we're going to get into the toes, into the feet. So tucking the big toe as deep as you can. Inhale as we're forward. Exhale as you feel your weights sink into your hips. Inhale comes forward. On our exhale, I want you to imagine that you have a tail and you're lightly turning that tail up towards the ceiling as you sink back. This is going to feel a little counter to what we've been working on because we're exhaling, drawing our navel in, and that tends to want to make a scoop. So we're going to resist the scoop. We're still drawing the navel in, but we're turning that tailbone up a little bit instead of letting it scoop. With each one, see if you can feel your hips sink a little bit deeper into the balls of the feet. How much load in, uh, can you get into the ball of the big foot, into, uh, of the big toe on the right and left foot? Uh, after about five to ten reps, we're going to turn our heels out as far away as we can, 
keeping the rest of the toes tucked, and we're doing the exact same thing. Inhale forward, exhale as you let your hips sink to heels, keeping that tailbone lightly turned up to the ceiling. Inhale, coming back up. How does this feel on the right foot compared to the left foot? Do you feel a bigger stretch on one side? Do you feel like you're able to go as deep on both sides? Is there a difference between the way it feels on the left compared to the right? And what is the language for that difference? How would you describe it? Again, if you need to take a little break on the wrist, we can come off the wrist. We're going to do a little bit more work in the quadruped, and then we're going to get into some deep kneel uh, work. So I want toes actively tucked, fingers are spread, palms are grounded, elbows are extended. We're coming back into our breath, filling up that belly allowing it to open up towards the floor. We're gonna get a, uh, let the pelvis turn to the floor with it so that we get a sway in our low back. On the exhale, we're drawing the navel in and we're scooping. But I only want this movement at the pelvis. So we're not doing cat-cows. Inhale, feel the pelvis turn to the floor. Exhale, we're scooping as much as we can without going into a thoracic cat. I don't want to reach and get this rounding of the upper back. So I want the, back to, the upper back to remain relatively still. And we're seeing how much can we move the pelvis towards the floor? How much can we then scoop it? And see if you can feel that tension of that scoop move up into the low back area. Should I want this to feel like something good and juicy, not painful, not uncomfortable. If you have some discomfort in the low back related to this pelvic movement, please schedule a consultation with me. That's going to be something that is a big deal. We want to work on that. Now, um, from here, I want to start to see, uh, can we bring our hips all the way back to the heels? We're going to, so um, this is going to be one of those areas, again, if you got knee pain, knee issues, you may not be able to do this next level of work. Um, it, it might be swelling in the knees, it could be something else. But I need, we need to be able to get our hips all the way back to being able to touch our heels in order to go through this next series. So if you're not able to get hips to heels like this, um, what we, you can work on instead is simply rock backs, hips to heels. In fact, let me just do a few reps of this. And this, if, if this is where the end of your progression, I would suggest continuing with this. So as I'm forward, I'm inhaling. As I exhale, I'm trying to keep my tailbone stuck, turned up lightly. And I'm seeing if I can touch my hips to my heels. Inhales coming all the way back forward. If we're able to touch hips to heels, then we can start to see, can I let my hands slide back? And can I accept weight of my hips on my heels? So however much weight I can, we can do, we can work to that point, if it means sliding back partially and then just reaching back forward and coming all the way out of it, then that would be the where I would, the, the work of where you're working, like that's the progression that I would work, focus on right now. If you're able to get your hips all the way back to heels, now we're gonna get into some pelvic tilts from this position. Same thing we just did in quadruped. Inhale, filling up the belly, getting a nice sway in the back. Exhale, drawing navel into spine and feeling that tailbone scooping up. Inhale, we're gonna let it bring all the way back into the belly, big sway in the back. Notice that it brings your spine tall. Exhale, drawing navel into spine, we're scooping. 
Noticing this nice rounding of the low back into the upper back. If all that's feeling good, we can start to take this to the next level. As you exhale, drawing navel, you scoop, continue to scoop and allow that scoop to start to lift. I'm still turning up through the tailbone. It's bringing me up. Once we get to the top, we're going to do our pelvic tilts from the top. We're going to inhale, filling up the belly, getting a big sway in the back. Exhale, navel into spine as we scoop. Inhale, big sway. Exhale, scoop. And then on the next inhale, as you inhale, notice how that kicks your tailbone out Get this big sway in the butt or in the belly, in the low back. We're going to continue to reach with that tailbone. I'm inhaling and I'm letting that tailbone reach, reach, reach. So it brings me back to my heels. Exhale, scoop. And we're going to let the scoop lift us up. Inhale, tailbone reaches to the heels to let us back down. Start to see if you can feel how this movement of the pelvis starts to create a wave up the rest of the spine. On the next one, as you're coming up to the very top, we're going to stay at the top. I want to get into this nice exhale, navel drawn into the spine. I want to stay active here. Pelvis is scooped. Rib cage is down. And now we can do some tall kneel lean back. But real important, rib stays down, pelvis stays scooped. And we're going to start light, lightly leaning back, keeping rigid in this core. I want to exhale as we lean back, inhale as we're coming forward. Again, I want to keep that scoop of the pelvis. If we lose our scoop as we're coming back, we're going to start to arch our back. That rib cage is going to stick out and I'm now getting a big sway in the back as we're loading backwards. I want to try to prevent that by holding in that scoop Core is engaged. I am braced. I'm seeing how far back can I go safely. And this is one where five up to 10 reps will be more than adequate. We'll bring our hands back down. And now we're gonna flip over and get down on our back. Feet are gonna go flat to the floor. Uh, feet are shoulder or a hip width apart. We're coming right back into the exact same breath work, breathing into the belly and letting that belly lift up to the ceiling, getting a big sway in the back. The pelvis is tilting forward. Exhale, navel draws into the spine as we get a light scoop of the pelvis. I don't want a lot of pressure in the feet. The feet are flat, but they don't need to be pressing down hard right now. E inhale. Fill that lift. The spine should lift high off the floor. You, hopefully you are able to slide either a hand or something into that low back space because it's off the floor. Exhale, navel draws in as we scoop. That flattens out the back. The low lumbar vertebrae should be pressing down towards the floor. And then inhale, lifts them up. On the next inhale, lifting up as you exhale, we are now going to continue to scoop. Just like we did in the tall kneeling, we're scooping and we're feeling that scoop lift us off the floor, peeling one vertebrae at a time until we get into the hips as high as we can, uh, feeling the, maybe feeling a little tension in the front of the hips and feeling some activation in the glutes. And then inhale, we're letting it all the way back down. 
I want to see if we can feel each vertebrae move one at a time. So as we exhale and lift, can you peel sacrum, L5, L4, then L3, then L2, then L1, all lift off the floor one at a time until we get into our hip extension. Then on the way back down, as you inhale, can you feel L1, L2, L3, L4, L5, sacrum, back to the floor? If you're struggling with feeling this, each individual segment, that's normal, but we're continue, I wanna to continue to actively work on getting that connection. Can you develop segmental control of your spine? With each one at the very, very top, keep scooping that tailbone like you're trying to touch from the tip point of your tailbone as high up to the ceiling as you can. And then on the next one, as you inhale, exhale, lift, we're going to stay at the top and we're gonna bring in all those same mechanics from here. We're gonna inhale, filling up the belly, allowing the pelvis to tilt. So I'm gonna get a big sway in the back, ribs sticking out. And then as I exhale, drawing the navel in, I'm actively scooping that tailbone up. Inhale, letting the pelvis shift. Exhale, scoop. I wanna to try to keep my hips on the same height. I don't wanna let them drop but I'm letting them rotate from within this position. And we'll do five or six breaths. With each exhale, if you're in the right position, you're getting that good scoop, core's locking in, you should start to feel your glutes fire up, like really light up on fire. And after five or six, we'll let our hips drop back down to the floor. At this point, we can grab our chair again or put our feet back up on a wall. Feet, uh, heels and toes or, or ball of foot are touching, knees are shoulder width. We're getting our hands on knees and actively pressing away at the same time that we are actively pulling the knees into the hands Shoulders and the head are relaxed to the floor as best as possible. And we're inhaling, filling up our balloon breath, filling up that balloon as big as we can on the inhale. Exhale, navel to spine and light kegel. On the next inhale, I wanna bring that breath in and expand on the balloon into the abdominal walls and down into that kegel of the pelvic floor. Feel the length on the inhale, feel the contraction and squeeze on the exhale. And after five to six good full breaths, um, we'll let our arms soften and relax down to the floor. We'll continue to bring in some nice big balloon breaths, but I wanna bring it in with less tension and with more just simple awareness. Noticing any areas where there is some tension in the body whether it's up in the ribs, shoulders or neck, or maybe it's down in the pelvic floor. Bring the energy of your breath into that tension, fill it up. And then on the exhale, see if you can allow that excess tension to just rinse off the body and onto the floor.
since this class was very breath heavy, as we finish up, I want you to get, be slow to get up, be slow to sit, be slow to stand. Make sure that there's no dizziness or lightheadedness before you get up um, in, a, in a way in which you don't have balance or stability. Just make sure any lightheadedness or t um, is, is passed before you start getting up and moving. And when you're ready, go ahead and get uh, open your eyes and slowly get back up.